Let's read the book together. Hank the Highway Hare by Gator Gilby. It was on a windy night when the moon beams danced upon a dew damp and graveled road that crossed the moors of Nod that a lonely highwayman, or more precisely, highway hare, named Hank, came trotting, came trotting toward the town of Tail's End. Onward, ever onward, the solitary Hank rode in search of carrots to steal. He was accompanied by only his hiccups and a brown Shetland pony named Jake. Coming around a bend, Hank spotted in the shadowy darkness Mary, a humble hedgehog, forging along the road for mushrooms to sell at the morning market in town. Halt, Hank shouted, and then hiccuped twice. Mary turned to see a figure of a hare wearing a black bandit eye mask, a French cocked hat, a black velvet jacket, and brown doe skin boots rapidly approaching her on his Shetland pony. You're quite the dandy, giggled Mary, as Hank and Jake stopped a few feet from her. Give me, Hank, kick up your diamonds. But I haven't got any, replied Mary. Okay, well then hand over your gold bullion, hiccup Hank. Mary shook her head. Don't have any gold, bu- gold bullion either. I'm trying to find some mushrooms along the road to sell at the market. Oh, said Hank disappointedly. He hiccuped twice. Would you like to join me as I search? You might find treasure, and I would like the company, invited Mary. Okay, Hank nodded with with a hiccup. But, he added, if any treasure is found, it's mine. As Mary and Hank continued along the road, Together with Hank periodically hiccuping, Mary asked, Have you tried holding your breath or silently counting to ten? What? Hank asked, puzzled. I noticed that you have hiccups. If you hold your breath and silently count to ten, they might go away. I'll give it a try, Hank agreed, but they have been with me since I left my family and friends to become a highway hare and the hiccups have never gone away. And after he hiccuped twice, Hank held his breath and silently counted to ten. Ten, Hank breathed out. Nothing happened for a moment, and then he hiccuped. Didn't work, Hank sadly confirmed. They never go away, he repeated sadly. After not going far, Hank and Mary saw a gray squirrel named Ned scampering ahead on the road. Stop! Hank loudly ordered. Ned stopped immediately, and Hank, Pete, and Mary approached. Surrender doubloons to me, Hank ordered with a hiccup. But I have none, said Ned. Then surrender your sillings and guineas, Hank demanded. Sorry, said Ned. But I have nothing. I lost my home in a hollow tree when it was struck by lightning. And I'm now on my way to town to stay with my brother Nutkin. How unfortunate, remarked Mary. Yes, Hank agreed. Why not join us on our way to town and help us search for mushrooms and treasure, suggested Mary. The treasure will be mine, reminded Hank with a (coughs) hiccup. Ned liked the idea, and he joined Mary, Hank, and Pete as they began once again on their journey. Except for Hank's hiccups, everyone was silent until Ned suddenly yelled out, Boo! Hank was startled. Huh? he exclaimed. What happened? Mary asked. Sorry, I thought a sudden scare might cure his hiccups, said Ned. An unexpected boo sometimes cures them. Hank, (coughs) hiccup, didn't work, he sadly said. But thanks, and I will share any treasure found with you so you can buy a new home. Thank you, Ned smiled. Not long after, Hank and the others could see hopping ahead Red the Robin, who had a white band of cloth 
wrapped around his wing. Stop where you are, Hank yelled between hiccups. Red turned and dared not move as Hank and the others approach and halted in front of him. Give me, <coughs> Hank hiccup, the silk band around your arm. Red cocked his head and said, I can't. Why can't you, hiccup, Hank? My wing is injured and the cloth is a sling and is merely cotton and not silk. I'm on my way to town to see a doctor. I see, said Hank disappointedly. Poor thing, said Mary. You can only hop and can't fly. Yes, Red nodded sadly, and my legs are so tired. Well, <coughs> Hank half hiccuped, I'll take you to town uh, along with the hedgehog and the squirrel. All of you get on the back of my horse. Hank dismounted Jake and began to help Mary, Ned, and Red onto the now empty saddle. Thank you, said Red as Hank gently lifted him and sat him next to the others. My name is Red, and who are you, asked Red. I'm a hopeless highway hare with nothing, Hank replied downheartedly. Hank took Jake's reins in his hands and began to lead Jake silently forward. But you have something, Mary observed. What? asked Hank without a hiccup. Friends, answered Mary, and friends are indeed riches. Riches you don't need to steal or require you to be a lonely highway hare, added Ned. Hank paused and then smiled. True, forgive my behavior and forgive my hic... Hank suddenly realized that his hiccups were gone. No more hiccups, Mary smiled. Never doubt the power of friendship. Ned chuckled. And I have an idea, kind hare, Red chirped. After I see the doctor, come with me, Hank, to the newly opened King and Tinker Theater, where I'm directing the highwaymen. I'm in need of an actor for the title role. Thank you, nodded Hank happily, as dawn was breaking and tail's end was in sight. And so it is now said that on any night, even when the wind is not in the trees, nor when the road to town appears as a ribbon of moonlight over the moors of Nod, Hank the Highway Hare comes riding, riding, riding across the stage to thunderous applause at the King and Tinker, and without any hiccups, the end.